Hey. Loading the screen. Dark vs. Hearthstone. Maps 3 and 4 of this Liquid Dragon Phoenix Gaming Showdown. As we start up on Romanda's side, bottom right side, we're going to start off with Dragon Phoenix Gaming, who are down 0-2. Let's see if Dark can tie this series up. As he is the blue Zerg in the bottom right corner. Uh, he even drops the GLHF emote. As Hearthstone is the red Protoss in the upper left-hand side from Team Liquid. You don't see that a lot. Just actually, because you actually have to write bracket, GLHF bracket. And, uh, <laughs> Doc, Doc just shows he's on the highest level of the GLHF game at the very least. So there you go. And as we kick this one off and we get this underway, let's, uh, let's see what happens. I'm, I'm interested to see what Harsten comes out with. I do feel like the recent meta has been pretty positive for Harsten. I feel like he's definitely looked good in the double stargate Void Ray meta in this later stage. Well, this more recent kind of style of PvZ, so I think there's definitely something about that to be looking at here going into this series. I'm just gonna see our pro moving out down to the bottom right hand side. Forge builder from Hossum, so he's actually gonna get all funky, but it's a gate into a forge, right? So this is not immediately like, a, oh, I'm cannon rushing and I'm winning the game with this. This is, you want to apply a bit of, like, laid-back pressure with the cannons almost, and, you know, if, if you even cannon at all, he's going to probe up into the main, he is going to pull down, he will pile on in the corner. If you can get a cancel on this natural hatchery while you're then going to expand pretty quickly yourself, going into your cyber core, that's typically going to be pretty reasonable, right? So that that's the major goal here. Austin is set to pile on block his probe in. So he's going to get that successfully down, and... Yeah, this cannon will go up, so this is obviously an investment from Harston that's already a lot of minerals placed down. Obviously, you will cancel some of these and get some of that money back. But some of it you will not, as a second pile I'm going to finish. So he's actually going to keep both the pylons here. One of them is out of range of the high ground, I guess. Maybe that's part of the goal. But he's going to go double cannon. He really wants to try and get a kill, and there's a road draw run from Dark. Well, that says to me is that Dark is looking for a follow-up to this, where you go across the map and you try and deal some damage as well, because if you're going to build roaches, that is quite an investment to start building roaches here. So, yeah. Uh, Hostum already building a Stalker. I mean, that's set up nicely to, to help him out as well. If he does have to come out defending against roaches, Stalkers are kind of the units you want to have across the map. Hostum is going to continue building on this position. Is he going to bring... He is bringing the Stalker across the map as well, I believe. Alrighty. So Austin's going to go for this. Now he's going to build a Stargate. And again, that is that is back at home. So that's not over here. Uh, and like immediately going to be able to join in the fight as the Stalker's still out over the left-hand side. And an additional cannon. Austin really is just going to try and hold this position. Five Roaches on the way. I mean, Dog's knocked down to one base. And you're already building a Stargate against this. I feel like Austin is set up brilliantly right now. Dog is just kind of dead, right? Like, austin has got a Nexus going down. He can expand off of this. Like, like this is just perfect right now for Hostum. And, and Dark is going to be so far behind. I mean, Hostum's going to build a Void Ray or something, right? That's the next step of this. And then... And, and then what next? What what do you do as Dark? He's going to slowly cross a vial down these, this pylon, break out of his main base. Hostum just checking the other bases, making sure there's not a hidden hatchery anywhere. Dark has been known to straight up like hide hatcheries literally like around the map um, in, in these situations in the past. Yeah, Voidry on the way out. This is actually just a really good start from Hostum. He's a bit supply blocked right now. I do feel stuff like the top cannon maybe wasn't necessary. Obviously it was maybe necessary if you go for like a Link Queen burst. I guess Hostum didn't really necessarily notice roaches so you maybe didn't need that third cannon in this scenario but sometimes you will. Roger just going to show up, and that's Dark. Not going to be Supply Block, but we'll have to make another OV a little bit sooner than he would have liked. The Ravagers are coming across the map. Dark double expands. We're going to see one Adept across the map is just keeping an eye on this. So he's going to get full information, just keep checking up on that. He's going to go into the main base, where he's actually going to go and uh, force the drones off the line, and he's going to pick up one kill. I mean, just for one Adept, one drone isn't bad. You get a little drone pull. That's pretty reasonable. 26 workers of Hawesome to the 18 of Dark. Dark has the army supply advantage, but an army that... In theory, shouldn't be able to do too much with the Void Rays out on the map. The Stork is going to see these Ravagers moving forward as well. Stork is probably dead here. But you know where the Ravagers are. Attempt to take a third base from Harstam is 
He is going to get that battle down, but he cancels it, so he gets the money back. Now we're going to see the Void Rays pushing the Ravages away, so... Great stuff so far as we see these Void Rays. Just going to dodge the Biles, hits one of them, eats another? No, dodges it. Wants to really try and keep up with the Ravages and get more than just one Ravager kill. If Dark gets away with just losing a single Ravager, that's pretty mental. Even getting away with all three of these alive. Looking good. This one's still coming across, finally met by Queens. I was just going to be seeing a setup in the main base with a second Stargate. So we know where Hossum's taking this right now. I gotta say, credit to Dark, I feel like obviously still not in a great spot, per, you know, per se, but he's actually making this probably one of the better case scenarios that it could have been. Now, this Oracle is quite happy to just pick up on these Ravages, right? So. He's going to go into the mineral line, but three Ravages instead? No, I mean, those are 100 gas a pop, right? So, they are nice to get rid of. They are nice to not have to worry about. I can't believe. Don't let that one live. And he's going to try and use a little bit of final energy. He's got 15 energy left to hit the mineral line. And he will get a couple drones out of this, too. So, also, going to find some additional damage. Oracle is out with plenty of HP left on it as well. It's hard. Hard not to kind of praise Hawson because I feel like everything he's done has put him into a reasonable spot here. He has to kill off his forge to actually allow for a proper wall off here and be able to move out towards the third base with other bits and pieces, apparently. They're now on the way in from Dark, so that's going to finish up around seven minutes, and then we can see what he wants to do against this ever growing Void Ray counters right now. Queens have just split up a little bit. I like that Hossum added the Oracle. It actually added a lot. Getting those two Ravager kills, a couple of drones, already paid for itself for sure. You know, his dog is definitely still stuck on kind of Roach Ravage here. Taking out those Ravages definitely helps. Some, you know, again, a few less Ravages to worry about a little bit later in the game. Double cleans out around the right-hand side. Infestation pit on the way from Dark, so that's kind of interesting. This fast infestation pit uh, setting up, so obviously the infestation pit gives you access to two things. One of them is going to be that hive. The other is going to be swarm host, and I feel like given the situation, swarm host might be the way you have to play this one as Dark. Swarm host potentially going to give you a setup where you can, you know, with the, with the swarm host out, what you can really do here is potentially go into, like, harassment, that could be scary. Oh, he's gonna go infestors, wow. I actually didn't really think about infestors. It's not something you go into a lot, but someone else did this lately. Who actually did this fairly recently on my stream? Hmm, I can't think, but it was kind of a similar situation. I did the exact same thing. I was like, oh, swarm, you know, swarm hosts of vipers, right? And then, in fact, the, the pathogen glance started. I was like, that's actually incredible, because the, the infestors and the fungals can actually do a lot here. Hostum is very ready to take this late game. He's just going to drop down the Fleet Beacon. To be fair, he's had the opening that gives him the, the safety barrier. Like, he feels safe enough to go carriers. And if he feels safe enough to go carriers in PvZ, he should probably go carriers. I know that involves playing late game against Dark, and that usually ain't pretty, but... I don't think that, uh... I don't think that you, you have to... I don't think that being aggressive too early is the better way to go around. I think you do play into your advantage here and take the chance to go late game comfortably. Queen's just going to push those Void Rays back out over the left-hand side, so... I mean, you get a little cancel on a fourth base there, right? Reset the build time on that. That's a pretty big deal. The one thing you don't want to do is, as those Infestors come out, you don't want to eat a bunch of Fungals and Neurals, because that's how this game turns around very quickly. Now a Hydrogen dropping down with the Hive on the way, and maybe this starts to become the intention of going towards something like Lurkers to support this army. The only issue I have for Dark, then, is that because Hossum's already on the way to Carriers, yeah, Infestors, to some extent, help against those with the Neurals even, too, but there is not, like, an amazing setup against Carriers, and usually against Carriers, we're basically talking about getting up to a Corrupt account high enough to really make a sizable difference in the game, uh, you know, and be able to fly in and to snipe down a couple of Carriers and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's not going to be present at all from Dark, so his actual army that Dark's going to be playing with is, is not ideal. It's not ideal for, for what Hawesome is already going into, and that's still why I kind of 
You know, especially as he's committing into lurkers now. It feels like lurkers are, yeah, they're going to help you hold on the ground. That's obviously going to happen, sure. But holding on the ground is not really your main concern any longer. That's already kind of passed a little bit. Right? Cordray's and the carrier setting up on the main base and joining up together. The Robo facility starting from Harston as well. Just going to be seeing a couple of additional Vipers continue to come on through. Hydralisks. Going to get that Groove Spines underway and just going to be seeing our couple Queens. Still set now down on the bottom here. Spore Crawls continue to come on up and we rally everything together right now as Harston joins up on this fourth base with his first few carriers. Plus two air weapons coming in. Of course, we've seen a lot of you know timings where you just attack once you hit that plus two air weapons lately, so that may be the plan. And I'm I'm terrified about this this carry account. I don't know what Doc is. Well, he's gonna get some nice murals off here, and Austin's gonna see the investors for the first time and realize, uh oh, that's uh, that's something I wasn't really expecting. I think Austin maybe got a little carried away there. He backs off now. I think you just back off and you wave a plus two. A few zealots into this natural, and Doc has to run some roaches over to deal with it. The thing is, all these roaches still don't have a lot to do in this game, right? Maybe counterattacking and so on, but in a larger fight, they're just eating up supply that really needs to be in, in other places. So, he's going to have to start using these roaches soon. Obviously, they can run in on the ground. They can be the, you know, a defense against High Templar. You can zone storms out and High Templar out from coming too far forward, but... The value that they provide is definitely limited, and especially as they get replaced with Lurkers, it's, even that is just an improvement as Harston sets up for the Mothership. Like I say, we are entering the late game between these two for sure. Got this uh, couple of Zards coming through. Queens jumping in on that, and just going to be seeing the Revelation dropping in on a couple of crew tumors and Spores. Now Dark goes into that double spy. That's what I've kind of been really wanting to see. The thing is, Halston gets maxed out. He should absolutely be looking to push forward here a little bit, right? Like, there is no reason not to try and take advantage of what you've got on the map. Now, the Roaches, I believe, are counterattacking. So that's something to watch out for. As these Zelds are going to peel around the right-hand side, that might put the Roaches back. There's not really much else to go deal with that, right? As Halston drops a Revelation. Yeah, it does pull the Roaches back. Austin's probably going to end up playing this left side of the map, which is quite interesting because Dark's also expanding to the left. This is not usually a map where the Zerg would expand left here. You know, usually you'd expand up the right side, and the Proos would expand down the left. But what happens now is that these two are going to end up being kind of like right next to each other with their expansions. And it really means we're going to have a little bit of a standoff. And run buys around the other side of the map are going to become very potent for Harston if Dark tries to get additional bases up over there. Here comes this Roach Ravager Force, as mentioned. It's only a matter of time before you basically have to use this as a, uh, you know, as an aggressive army, because otherwise, what else are you going to do with it? I feel like even now, back in a way, you should just go. Make use of it. The longer the dog waits to get rid of those units, the more supply that's just being taken up by, again, those units that don't really do that much. Awesome, looks as though he wants to take a bit of a fight into this. Infestors. Oh. Oh, gonna come through. Nice feedback. Hits double Viper on the feedbacks to start with there. That was a good first starting fight for Harstam, in all honesty. I, I, I can appreciate this is obviously a scary, terrifying position to fight into. There's so many Spore Crawlers. You know, there's Infestors ready. It's very easy to make a mistake in this fight and to lose the game. And that's what Harstam is definitely concerned about, right? He's very worried about making that mistake. So he doesn't want to commit into the fight. He's going to try and move over to this side. Try and force a relocation. Maybe there'll be a less well-prepared Dark in position over on this side. That's got to be the goal for the moment. Is the Oracle keeping up those revelations? That's important. Austin is building a bank behind this. But of course, as is Dark. Austin just going to knock down these rocks to begin with here. And this does seem like a little bit more of a hopeful position. Some feedbacks on Infestors. And i got to say, Austin's spellcasting so far has been spot on as well. Hard to criticize Hostum so far in this game. Well, like I say, he's actually played a pretty great game. He's he's definitely seen his advantages. He definitely knows what he's working with. And oh my god, we just saw microbial shroud be used, guys. Oh, this is a this is a weird game. Even just moving forwards here, these interceptors are gonna get to work. I mean, honestly, Hostum is just happy working from the side because working from the side means he can get the hatchery. 
Getting some drones. There's a few units, I believe. Well, there's something on the left-hand side. Yep, it's going to be those roaches showing up. And they actually just took down the pylon that was powering everything. So, Halston, what do you want to do? Do you want to recall out of this? you got to do something against this roach ravager force. You can't just let it keep on killing your fifth base, surely. For the moment, he's going to keep on pushing in as though he doesn't actually mind that happening. But there's got to be a, con you know, a cause for concern. High Templars get caught in a fungal grove. No storms on those microbial shrouds. And that's oftentimes what we talk about being the issue with the uh, microbial shroud is that you've got to stack units in it. And if you stack units in it, it lets the storm do a lot of damage. I am worried that Hostum is uh, losing that left-hand base. I think losing a fifth base is very scary in this current situation because that mining that you're missing out on, I mean, it just means now that you don't have the, you know, the fifth in location. You don't have that as a location you can play around. You don't have stacked defense there. I mean, the mothership was just there as well. It could have moved over and cloaked stuff up as well. Yeah, it just feels like that's the one the one thing we can criticize about Hostum so far this game is he's going to move back around this left-hand side. Remember, there's a lot of spores and stuff in position over here. That's a yoink on the uh, carrier, and it will go down. The feedbacks went down on the Vipers once again, so we'll bring those a little bit lower on HP, and once again, they are out of energy and not able to do too much else just yet. All the way around the left-hand side, Hoss. I, I like it, right? You've taken down the base on the right. There's not really much reason to push further in over there. Better just start chipping away on the left. Awesome's going to take the forward fifth base. If he does this, I would love to see him take the minerals out between his third base and that fifth base. I think that's the one big issue he might have, taking that forward fifth base, right? Is that he just needs to take those minerals out. Just He has a bit more mobility. He just recalled over to this right-hand side with the mothership. Cute move as well. Move that over to the right, use the Mothership Recall to get here, and that catches Dark completely out of position. Look at the storms he's able to get down. And that's Hostum. You can see what's being reproduced. It's just kind of continuing to win out and keeping Dark on, well, five bases. So if Hostum can take five bases and keep Dark on five bases, that's generally a good couple. High Templar just trailed into this late, though. That's obviously a shame. Hostum has to get rid of a couple of changelings. A queen or two steps too far forward. Both players have pretty sizable banks to work with here. If Hoss can, this, this is the thing for Hossum. If he can just keep these bases down from Dog and actually hold base himself, I don't know what the efficiency is right now or the resources lost, but if we get a chance to see that, I imagine it's going to be heavily in Hossum's favor, right? This is a big counterattack, and Hossum's going to have to go deal with this. But I tell you what, these Hydras are obviously committed, right? So these Hydras, okay, they're going to find a way out the left-hand side, which means they don't do too much more damage. It does force Hossum home. It's a dangerous game you're playing as Dog, because the moment you lose out on those Hydras is is a really problematic moment or two because the second those hydras go down that's a lot of supply hydras are not cheap to build either i'm going to be seeing the void rays carriers coming through okay well we do see the uh mother ship making a big play he's going to recall into the main with the idea of following up with a recall out onto the map again. So you can recall back home out of this position if he feels the need to. He's got a Void Ray working on this hatchery. Is he going to go for this recall right now? He does not. He just time warps. He's actually going to recall. Does, is that recall an in? No, it's recalling the mothership out. I was just <laughs> double checking there. But he's actually forced the units to go respond to the mothership. So now he moves in on this other side. That's a storm down. It was a good fungal to slow down this attack. Now you neural up the, uh, the Immortal. Oh, Immortal's going to start killing the High Templar. No! <laughs> I say bomb and fungals, and that's probably the... Yeah, Hostum, you can see him shaking his head a little bit there. That was probably the biggest loss he's had so far. Because he's going to lose out on a lot of stuff. Specifically, that Void Ray count falling a little bit. He's going to replace those with additional carriers. It's actually, that it really is the first time the Hostum's lost out in a little while, right? I liked it from, from Hostum, though, right? It was the right idea, but Dog was still prepared with enough to defend. Oh, he doesn't have a storm on that High Templar just yet. That's a real shame, and now Dog is suddenly exploding around the map. He's going to hit the right, left-hand side. Remember, Hossum can't recall to deal with any of this because he's just used the recall to save the mothership. Carriers are going to chase down the uh, Hydras, though. And they're going to get a good few kills out of this as well. That left side base, was that left alive? The Lurker's pulling back. I think he realizes, okay, he left a single Lurker there. Hossum still has a bank to work with, guys. It's, oh, my God, slow lings. He doesn't even have ling speed, Dark. It's been that, of course, because he opened with the cannon rush and the roaches were the response. 
He's building Ling Speed here, 20 minutes into the game. This left side base is in trouble. What's big for Doc is he's gotten off of five bases. A few moments ago, we were talking about a five base Doc. Now we're talking about a seven base Doc. Because, yeah, Harston has five bases. He has six, but that's going to go down in a moment or two. A massive change on here. Just, he's even going to storm to try and make this an easier cleanup. Wants to try and deny the vision of Doc. You don't want Doc just knowing where you are all of the time, right? Let's look. We'll finally clean out that left side. I don't think Harston should worry about that too much. He's going to focus on the right, on the top side of the map at the moment. And that's not a bad thing because the additional bases of Doc are coming down this right side. So this might be just where he wants to be with his main army anyway. This time there are High Templars with energy available. So they can actually storm and push those Hydras away as they try and push into this aggressive position. Bastard's pulling back. Just going to be seeing. Look at the... <laughs> The income advantage there. That's Dark mining a lot more over time, but like I say, I've, I've actually still not quite caught the resources lost here, but I still imagine it's probably looking pretty okay for, for Harson when it comes to resources lost. The High Templar just moved back forward, and the High Templar are going to get taken down. Those are just the little things that are very expensive at the moment, right? Those are the little things that actually cost you quite a lot. That's two or three High Templars just didn't need to die right there. Microbial Shroud goes down instantly. The carriers are going to back it up. Oh, growth came down too. Now there's some Corruptors here. Of course, we lost the Void Rays from earlier in the game. So these Corruptors are a little bit safer than they used to be as the Fuggles still down. Another uh, abduct. Austin had such good feedbacks on the Vipers earlier, but this time, absolutely not the case. That's definitely affecting a little bit. How can Wardy miss the resources lost? They showed it 10 times already. Probably because I'm looking at about 10 different things and I'm not looking the moment they actually bring it up. And because I don't use this UI a lot, when they bring up units lost, I forget that it shows resources lost as well. So I keep looking in the bottom right corner for resources lost. Not in the middle of the screen when they bring up the units lost thing, you know? That's why. Slash, I'm just an idiot. You know, you can take your pick. This look that's caused so much trouble on the left side gets cleaned out. Um... Hostum is really kind of running low on minerals, actually. But, I mean, he's getting bases up. He's just put a lot of money into stack defense. That's why his mineral count has gone down, right? So... It's not too crazy as High Templar again. It's just sloppy from Harston, right? You're starting to see the difference in the players, right? The little engagements, the little minor things here are just starting to go the way of Dog. The little pickups, and they are going to have such a huge role later in this game. Because when it comes down to the final pieces of efficiency, that's going to be a pretty sizable difference. I'm going to kill off a few drones here. It's important, I think, Harston doesn't let this bottom left go up for Dark. Again, obviously, any base you can deny is a good base to deny, right? But I don't think you can just let Dog mine too freely. Dog only has 60 workers. Hostum has 50. So it's not like super crazy economies. The armies are pretty sizable. Obviously, very stacked defense heavy from Dark out in that bottom left-hand corner as well. I was going to see uh, Void Rays, Queens, High Templar. Sorry, Void Rays carries High Templar, not Queens. They will move back to the center. With the Greatest Spy coming up, it just gives Dark another option, right? Another chance to play in towards Broodlords or so. If you feel like that is uh, necessary. Love. Changelings going down. We drop a Revelation into the center again. A few more Changelings being picked away at. Again, Hostum looking for openings, looking for chances to take down a base, but where do you go? There's so many spore crawlers on the map. I'd actually love to see a spore crawler crowned found here as well. Uh oh. These High Templar aren't very well protected, so the Ultras make a dive for them. Yeah, the High Templar got back to that ramp. That was dangerous though. Without units on the ground as you know, deal with the ultras, if those ultras get on top of HTs, you're gonna see those dropping very quickly. So that's something to uh it's definitely something to worry about. Because typically, you know, later in this game, you get to see this kind of Immortal camp build up against those Ultras. And that's why, because you want the Immortals to even not just be good against the Ultras, but just to tank the Ultra shots so your HT stay a little bit safer in the game. A little Void Race Scroll going to try and come through here. Gets a Spore Crawler, runs out of there. I mean, just chip damage, right? Little bit by bit, trying to do whatever you can get done. Uh, Void Rays all pulling back to these carriers, and well, High Templar's still sitting underneath this army as well. Raptor's still building, plus three melee about to finish up, and these Ultras are going to go for 
a run into the upper right hand side. We'll see Hostum shouldn't really be allowed this base either, right? So, I mean, we are getting to the point, though, where as Dog takes the bottom left, we kind of have an every map on the map mind, apart from Hostum's, I guess, space that was there for a little while. These voids are going to show up. Can they get an Ultra out of this? Okay, that's not bad. You lose a Nexus, you get an Ultra. Look at Dog's bank, by the way. 7.5k to 5k. The biggest issue for Dog may just be that, obviously, you know, his army is very gas-heavy, so it's very possible you run out of gas before you run out of minerals. It's always nice to actually, you know, continue to add in a uh, few, you know, queens and so on and lings before it gets to that stage. I always say this in late game PvZ, but, you know, using queens right now might not seem like the best when you've got gas to use, but it makes it so that you don't have, like, an excess of minerals at a later stage of the game where it's just queens on their own and they're not going to be as effective. And Doc feels like he's just given up these lurkers, doesn't really see use for them. He's just trying to be as annoying as possible with them. Uh, trying to pull Hostum around a little bit with them at least. Why no Dog Temple to cancel the building bases? DTs are just not really... I mean, look how many spores are on the map, right? And It's just going to take a little bit too much to really... It's just not... I just think in this sort of stage of the game, it's not really worth the investment for DTs with so many spores around, right? There's so many de much detection. I was just going to use the voids. Like, he has the units to deny these building bases better than DTs anyway, so may as well make use of them. These voids are in trouble, though. Corruptors are going to get here. Oh, these void rays are going to go down. Hostel knows that that's costly as well. That's a lot of Void Rays. That's the sort of efficiency that Dog wants to pull back in the game a bit, and it's exactly what he's able to do. Hostum will try and take the Corruptors out of position as a chance to dive on the right-hand side. Corruptors are going to start sweeping over. Uh, they actually ran through the couple of... Uh, ran through a couple of cannons there for a moment or so as well. As these Ultras are definitely a, a prime target, because these Ultras are going to do work against those uh, High Temple if they get them, but... For the moment, the ult just get chased back. I mean, that was a transfusion war as well. For a moment, the interceptors start to go to the queens instead. 23,000 resources lost from Dark and 29,000 from Hearthstone. Wow. I didn't realize that Dark has played such a... I, 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 crazy. It's very impressive that Dark's played such an efficient game. Definitely some of these ladder fights have been going that way. We do see this fight breaking out right now. And it's just going to be seen. This was a much better fight for Hearthstone, though. He brought that resources loss back count back by about 2,000 or so, so that's actually a pretty big deal. And you win fights like that, that's how Hostum's still going to look good to you. But the problem is he's going to need to keep on mind. He cannot just sit back on these six bases. He's going to need a base number seven. This is tough. Twelve more Corruptors on the way in, by the way. He's going to start trying to take this Nexus as Doc is going to try and take the hatchery. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, that's the that's the situation we're in right now. They're fighting over this top right base. Lings run through into the natural expansion. Void rays gonna be able to clean out a bunch of those zerglings into the natural expansion. We do see the void ray force in the bottom left hand corner is gonna come in, is gonna work its way through and kill off that hatchery. So he's denying the bottom left of Dark once again. I think that is actually really important. You know, the thing is, Dark can't send a good chunk of units down there to defend that because at the end of the day, it's uh. It's kind of far off, especially when you're defending the right side from the main army. I'm surprised to see Immortals over on this left-hand side with these Void Rays, because... I don't say you want to get rid of the Immortals right now because of the, you know, the Ultras that are on the map. I do like those Lings that are involved. Like I say, I think the Lings do have a role to play right now. Softening up the mineral count a bit so that you don't just have an excess of minerals at the end of the game. Because at the end of the day, if you have 100 Lings running in against this army later on, they're not going to do anything. But 20 or 30 Lings sprinkled in sporadically... Can actually add quite a bit, chasing down some units, counter-attacking, for example. They have more use now than they would in on mass later if you run out of gas. Awesome sets up in the upper right corner. And camp out over there as these spores setting up in the bottom left as well. Plenty of additional batteries coming down as our tempest production continues. So Hostum making a bit of a switch into those tempests. This is something which he could have done a long time ago. I think it's also because he's up against Broodlords now. Uh, but it also gives him the chance to at least also pick away at the ground army or the ground structures from a distance, right? That's definitely a benefit to this as well. His lings will be deflected. You can see Hostum's money is running into some problems. 3k, 3k in the bank. He cannot rebuild from a complete wipe of a fight. Dog, 3.5k gas though. That's the thing, right? Like I said, Dog just has so many minerals, but the gas in comparison... 
It's not really there. Looks like he's making a better effort to defend the bottom left side of the map now. Uh, Halston has so many uh, High Templar over here, by the way. I didn't realize he has so many HTs on this side of the map. That's kind of crazy. Like, they just left defensively, sure, but it feels like a lot to leave behind. He's going to make a play down to the bottom left with those voids again. We'll see if the defense that's set up there is going to happen. This is going to be a big fight, it seems. You're going to see a Doug starting off and a couple of Tempest Fungals on the right side as the Infestors get targeted down. Dog lost a lot going into that fight, and he's going to lose that hatchery bottom left as well, as well as a few drones. So awesome showing up there once again, and getting a big important denial on that base. Zealot's warping in to deal with this Ling run by as these voids are going to start taking on Spore Crawlers, apparently. Clean out some of that stack defense bottom left. The Corrupt is on the way, though. So Hostum, you're running out of time to get these Void Rays out of here safely. He's missing that opportunity. Does he recall? He does, but he left it so long. He was very greedy with these Void Rays. He did not need to stick around for that long in the slightest. But now the Corrupt is out of position, and that's where Hostum's going to strike on the right side again. And this gas income being denied is massive. Gas is the biggest issue that Dark has in this game right now. He has 2,200 left. He has the same amount of gas as what Hostum has. That is a big, big issue. And Hostum has that fresh base up and right. He's just denied the bottom left. Anytime you're denying gas mining at the moment, I think is going to be a huge deal. Resources lost is coming back to even. It's only a 2k difference or less between the two of them right now. Hostum still has that unmined base on the 9 o'clock location that in theory should be his. He needs to be careful. The way this game is going, Dark might end up with that 9 o'clock, but Harsten can maybe take the 3 o'clock instead. Dark's actually going to take it right now. Like I say, Harsten can take the right-hand side as a, as a comparison. Zealot's running in. They might be able to go down and deny that new base in the bottom left-hand corner. I like it. Switching it up. It's always been an air threat that Harsten has sent down there, but now it's going to be a Zealot threat. Dark has the Zag D to hold over here. These couple extractors starting to go down. Dark's actually only on 28 drones. Even if he does get bases up, mining is very limited. I mean, also Harsten on 39 workers too, but it means that base is going up in excess, right? When it's like, a, you know, more than just one additional base. It becomes a pretty big deal as we're going to see these zealots find this other hatchery and that's another little chunk of money that Dark is going to lose out on. I think that was a kill and not a cancel. This Hostum still has those Zealots in the bottom left. We'll see if they can continue to do more. I mean, that base is rebuilding bottom left again. These Zealots are still not being dealt with by anything, by the way. Oh, but this is interesting. These Broods are going to find a push into the center. Hostum has some minerals left there. I imagine the gas isn't mining there anymore because it's a rich Vespian guys. So that should have mined out a long time ago. It mines out very quickly because you mine more from it. Looks like the Zealots are finally handled in the bottom side, but maybe not, actually. I think they might be chasing down some units. Awesome takes out this base. There goes the mothership abducted in. Get your 400-400s in the chat. And as that mothership just got annihilated. Now these zealots are actually just chasing down spore crows. They're still around. That's uh, that's actually incredible. They should have gone bottom left though, because that bottom left base is is coming down now. Where are we at, right? I mean, Harston is going to lose this central base. I, I don't necessarily think minerals are going to be the problem though, right? I, I think it's gas and this base for gas... Is kind of that. I guess Hostum is kind of lower on minerals. That's true. Uh, Dark has zero gas income right now, by the way. He has zero gas income at all. So he's actually just stuck on 2.2k. If Hostum can wipe this army and, and wipe through that bank, he can maybe do this. Dark is in desperate times, guys. He is going to get the bottom left base up, though, at least. So again, he's going to get that base, but Hostum has the, still the top right, which is fairly fresh, and that right side base that used to be Dark's. Hostum's going to super battery these cannons. I'm not sure what that's really going to do. He's just trying to maintain building presence on this left-hand side of the map, right? Because eventually, if it comes down to that far left base, just having a nexus here connects you up a little bit more easily. The static defense would have been something to fall back to. Hostum has some flanking high Templar from the left-hand side. That wasn't expected from Dark, and he eats a couple of big storms on every single Corrupter, by the way. Revelation comes down. And as Hostum is chasing, Dark has to throw out a couple, a little bit more gas onto some Vipers. Tempest again, some kills from afar. Dark, can he find the The problem is, this is such a tense moment or two because a wrong fight, a wrong move from Hostum can be so costly. But it does seem like Hostum gets the right side base up without issue. And again, right now, minerals definitely seem to be his bigger problem, although he should definitely still look to mining that gas, even just for taking it away from Dark. Dark does have gas mining about to start a game, by the way. Bottom left-hand corner is finally mining. All this time, he's been without gas mine income. Now has just been fixed. He gets that side up. He's made banelings here to crush through the stack defense. 
I find that, uh, I, I'm shocked by that, simply for the fact of, as Flanking High Templar do well again, I'm shocked for that simply for the fact that this was a, um, a, a gas investment from Dark, right? You have to build gas? I mean, there's a lot of minerals that Hostel loses out from, don't get me wrong. I'm just surprised that Dark spends gas to do that. I guess it's the most efficient way. Oh, this game is wild, guys. Mothership shows up. Looks like Hostum is going to send the Mothership to the right. Maybe look to defend that right side base with the Mothership just cloaking and make it so that you need detection there as Dark to do much about it. Now the Lings that are building as Dark uses that Mineral Bank will be able to hit this right side. No stag defense on that newer base. Yeah, but the Mothership there is going to force you to have at least an Overseer in position. I'd love to see the over... I mean, there's so many things I want to see and check up on right now, but... Again, we're not observing, guys. I just got to work with what we are shown. There's obviously quite a few overseas over here. Oh, Hostum, he's going to leave his Tempest behind. Hostum just loses a chunk of Tempest for free. Massive catch from Dark. As Hostum loses a chunk of what was looking to be so good for him. Oh, that's a huge loss. Just out in the middle of nowhere, Tempest. They weren't even flying anywhere, right? They were just left behind. That is such a problem. Arsenal's going to be forced to spend some of his final chunks of money on replacing that. As again, obviously, he wants to reset this right side base up. That's why he's defending at the moment. The lings around the map are definitely starting to become a bit, a bit more of a problem as well. He's going to go for this base. I mean, Dark getting the bottom left-hand side in general, I think, is just a huge deal. Being able to get that bottom left-hand corner of the map up and running, is, is it's a game-changer, quite frankly. It really does just give him so much more opportunity. And in the bank, I mean, Hostum still has a lot of gas to use. That's dark. Every time you see these uh, Zerglings going down again, the these are minerals, which... Uh, it's that left side base. I, I want to say that this is maybe problematic for Dark losing out on minerals as well, but quite frankly, with the left side base up, he's got mining that he didn't have previously, and, and that is just huge. I mean, Hostum is not bad on mining either. In fact, Hostum's still mining more than Dark. He has Dark when he has 21 drones. So I guess Hosman's not in a rush. He needs to deal with these Zerglings, though. Z uh, Zealots just were not getting the job done. His Lings are still streaming in. That's all that Dark has been building. Hosman losing production is obviously a problem. You can't just lose, you know, Stargates and stuff. You, can't, you don't have the money to rebuild Stargates as well, right? Like, that's not where you want resources to go to at this stage of the game. The problem is, when you show up with these Void Rays as the attempted defense, you're afraid of the Carriers be or the Corruptors being here. And if the Corruptors are there and the Void Rays go down... Not going to have a good time. He's bringing, like, the whole army across now. He's going to send the Void Rays around the right side. To do what, though? Like, what does he hit with those Void Rays? Not really sure. Now is the, the Broodlords, which are maybe threatening the right-hand side base. This couple of Archons going to... Well, have to chase Lings up into the main, right? That's, again, just Hostum's army being pulled way out of position for anything. Leap picking goes down. Well, that's something you have to rebuild as Hostum, so that is costly. Because that is money you have to spend. I still maxed out here. 180 army supply of Dark, 160 of Hostum. There are a lot of corruptors on the map. Resources lost is back in Dark's favor by about 10,000. Those Tempests were a massive loss for him, and I feel like Dark has now got this kind of ultimate army that Hostum just can't really rebuild against as easily. The fact that Dark was able to get that bottom left side in his own control, yes, he cost him the top right a little bit, but those fresh bases bottom left while trading better is an issue. What Hostum needs to do now is wait for the right fights. He can't just run around and, you know, take script, you know, scraps. He needs to... Hostum could still potentially win a fight. But winning that fight's not going to be easily done. You have to take it carefully, slowly. The problem is all of his productions in this top left-hand side and... It's obviously just going to get ripped apart by Lings again, right? Like, his production is the issue here. Losing, and this is what happened. We talked about that base that I went down earlier. Oh my god, Slow Banes just waddle in for 19 workers. We talked about that forward base that Dark killed and how it opens up the map and it, ta you know, it takes away Hossum's Lings to the left side. It opened up the attacks into the natural, right? Then the next step is this main. All of these problems for Hossum are coming from that attack on that left side, losing that kind of forward stack defense, which he was really reliant on, to be honest. Awesome supply blocks. His production keeps falling. And again, having to spend money on production is, is painful. Especially now that he's having to spend money rebuilding probes as well. I mean, he's gonna, basically going to end up on this top right side, but 
Doc's bank is just on the way back. 4k minerals, 3k gas. Remember there was a point that Hossum had Doc on 1k gas or so and he just wasn't mining anything? That was the moment, that was the chance, but it feels like it's gone. That's tough. Hossum doesn't really have a lot of good options about what to do in that upper left side, so he is just fully rebuilding on the right. But again, when it comes down to what is being lost, you can just see Hossum's lost a ton more minerals, a bit more gas. That efficiency for Doc is... Unless Hossum can bring it back in the larger fights now. I guess you got to remember a lot of that is kind of structures of Hossum that are now dying off as well. One sixty-eight to one seventy-six. I mean, Hossum's gonna leave, have to leave this game. If he loses this game, he's gonna have to leave this game with like four thousand gas in the bank, which is obviously not really a feels good. You can see Hossum is quite visibly frustrated about that. He can't do anything about this. Oh, there's a lot of good things to say for Hossum earlier in this game, but Dark, I think we've got to give credit to, has played a beautiful, beautiful game in these last little, uh, in the last 10, 15 minutes. He's really. He really recovered from Hostum playing some good moves. And Dog has made some fantastic things happen. And Hostum is essentially going to end up camping out on one base. And this is just a question of does Dog camp, you know, attack into that one base? Or what's going to happen here? Hostum is down, you know, he's oversupplied, right? He's, he's supply capped. It feels like time doesn't isn't Hostum's friend. But the thing is, stack defense is Hostum's friend. So... Again, is Hossum just going to try and force this fight over here? That's what you go for, right? If you can force the fight over on the right-hand side of the map, you have some potential. You have some opportunity to maybe change how this goes. Banes are going to come through to bust through stack defense. This is way more affordable now for Dark than it was when we first saw those Banes showing up on this base currently in picture. It's way more affordable. As you know, He's just going to target fire down a whole bunch of pylons, batteries, probes. There's not a good way for, for Hossum to deal with this, to be honest. If he loses these pylons, then it's, you know, it's also just money that he has to spend again to, to get on supply block to to replace any of that. Nine workers go down. I wouldn't say that was crazy efficient as... Look at this income graph, by the way. Look at how much more Hostum is mining until just recently. Finally, Dark is back mining in his favor. You know, Hostum's missing those minerals on that forward base, the rich Vespian gas base. We mentioned that that really wasn't an issue at the time, but... Now, the, I bet those are minerals that Hostum wish he freaking had. Because he is, uh, he's mineral starved more than anything else. He's mineral starved more than anything else as we go. A little quick fact for you guys. The, the clock time had just changed. I have an hour mark, and that's because it's still coded to believe in Heart of the Swarm time. In Heart of the Swarm time, this would have been the one hour marker of the game. So, that's why it's still coded, and that's why the hour symbol pops up at 42 minutes or so. A little tidbit of info. It feels like it's like a necessary bit of info to share when you uh, hit this stage of a game, you know. Well, here comes Dark. He's looking for the fight in. Hostum, he knows the fight he wants to take here. He knows the fight he needs to take here. If he's going to make this work, the batteries are going to get blown the hell up. And there goes a lot of that side defense, Hostum. Well, Dark's making lings. Dark's actually also taking the middle of the map, that base we mentioned about the minerals. Dark's actually going to take that base and mine the minerals off of it. I mean, why not? You control the map, Hossum is just going to camp it out. This is exactly what you want to do in this situation. This is exactly the way to play it. You sit on this base and you hope that Dark overcommits into a position, attacks badly, throws away too many resources and can't rebuild. In theory, Hostum still has the minerals and gas to, to build with for a while here, right? If he, I mean, He's not going to be able to rebuild quickly, but... You know what I mean? If he loses a couple units, he can rebuild them. And if you can get some more units out... You know what I mean? You've got to trade super efficiently, but... you got to try everything. You didn't come 45 minutes in the game just to give it up, right? you got to play until your last... Your last chance. Templar Archives is starting. Uh, Twilight Council, sorry, is starting. What does he want the Twilight Council for? Not sure, another round of Banes are going to go and say hello to all of these batteries. And this is gas for minerals, right? But, like I said, I don't think... Like, minerals are an issue for Hossum. Like, he actually just doesn't have the minerals to to rebuild this tag defense. You know, gas is not an issue for Hossum at all. Let's see, the 12k difference in minerals lost this game. 
Awesome, staying active with this oracle, throwing down the revelations. Temple, okay, it's okay. So he wants to get archons up again. You know, there was a point in this game where I was kind of thinking, didn't say it out loud at the time, but kind of apparent now as well, right, where Dark actually just has like a massive air army, and it's like if you actually clean out the... You actually lose your own air army and you just go for like mass ground force if you could have done. Like Dark would just have like a ton of corruptors. Of course they can morph into broods, but uh, a ton of corruptors that are not as useful as, as other things. Playing Bane top light, right side again. Looks like Harson's going to end up just losing this base. So he's going to have this one base of mineral mining left over. So Harson has the far right side of the map that he's just camped out in. I think he's building a gateway because he might not actually have any gateways left. Supply blocked again. How, how much can Harson fit on one platform, guys? Is it literally BM from Harston? It's literally not. If Dark attacks in and loses his army, Harston can still win the game. But there's the, this is literally how you play this situation, guys. Dark has been in this situation before against Stats in an IEM Katowice semi-finals, I want to say 2017? And it was an exact same situation, might have been 2016, but it was a semi-finals IEM Katowice, and it was a game just like this. It was on... Um, Oh, I can't remember the map. It's the map where you both spawn bottom left, bottom right. Uh, and this exact situation arose, and it was actually Dark that camped out on one base and forced stats to attack into him. The roles were reversed. That's how these stages, you know, this is how the games go at this stage. You gotta play what you've got. It's not BN. You know, there is a realistic way in which Dark throws away too much army, and Harstam is able to capitalize on that. Crips and Vipers settling down in the center. Golden Wall? No, it's not Golden Wall. No, no, no. It, this is like four years ago. Um, I want to say it was like Nika Creasing, but I don't think that was in the map four years ago. Anyway. 48 minutes of action, and again, Austin just sitting back. Dog's just throwing a few units at him every now and again. We sit back and we wait. We sit back and we wait. I was just going to be seeing the uh, another round of Banes coming in. I think this is the right move from Dark, by the way, because these Banes are actually doing a lot. Like, they're keeping some Possum supply blocked. Possum has no choice but to put his, mineral, his pylons, like, really close together. So the Banes are actually getting pretty good efficiency. So I actually think it's it's worthwhile to keep on doing this. It does kind of put Harsom into a, a tricky position as well, right? As Doc's just going to sit out here in the center. Doc's added on a bunch of drones recently as well, by the way. I actually kind of wonder about that, because that does mean, you know, more drones, you mine stuff out faster, but... It doesn't mean, like, right now your army is a bit smaller, but I guess Dog's just playing the long game anyway, right? <laughs> He's going to take that top right base. Why the hell not? Um, I guess it gets to the point where there's no drones needed anymore to mine, so then you actually can just have a full 200-200 army. And maybe that's the point at which Dog goes for this. And we're setting up on the far right side. Yeah, Doc's problem is Hostum's army, like I say, is still scary. It's still threatening. Is that a long distance gas that's going to come through? It's a grab on an oracle. So that's an oracle down. That's some of Hostum's revelations. He's not going to be able to reset right now. I think Harston might actually be done rebuilding pylons. I wonder if he's just going to wait until he loses units. I don't know. It's kind of going to take a while. Stack defense moves forwards here from Dark. Obviously, it's just this wall of stack defense as he's taking control of the game. Uh, everything just resettling down. You can see the Tempest actually adventuring forward a little bit. 
Awesome zombie adventuring forward a little bit. Got a couple little drones. Awesome doesn't even realize that upper right base is being taken as... Like I say, he ventures out, but... Can he take somehow the fight that he needs? To make this work out for him. Doc's building ultras. Of course, Doc can obviously rebuild as well. So the fight you need as Hostum is... One in which you take down a lot of stuff very quickly. You need to kill a lot of stuff, like... All at once, and you need to maybe start, you know, shutting down production lines from there. There you go. Doc's getting close. He's going to grab the mothership. Time warp goes down. Second of Duck comes in. Hossman's getting quite a few Broodlords off of this. Pushing forward into the stack. Defense is dangerous. That's going to be seeing the spores on the bottom side. Continuing to go down the spine crawler as well here. Hossman's fully committed to going for this fight right now. Doc's already starting to rebuild as Hostum is honestly not losing a lot so far. You can see the Ultra chasing down the High Templars. All of the stack defense goes down. Hostum breaks out for the moment. 20 new Corruptors on the way, though. That is the problem. If there's no Storms available, what do you do to get rid of those Corruptors? Hostum, does he need to just keep on pushing forward? Apparently, that is what he's going to try and go for here. Pushes forward. It's an air army, no real ground support. And I think that's going to be, at the end of the day, the biggest issue for Hostum. Not actually having... A way to just soften up these Corruptors at all. Here we go. Corruptors are going to start fighting in. Taking down Void Rays one at a time. Hawson's supply is dropping heavily. Dark has the money to rebuild. And Hawson knows that this fight is done. He tried it. He went for it in the end. He pushed out. And Dark does just have the numbers to take this one down. Dark takes the first map of Hawson in a 50 plus minute. I really think that uh, Hawson played a really good game. Like, he played, like, there was so many parts of the game that even past the start, he played very well. Our, uh, our clean feed is just gone, guys. Oh, we're back, we're back, we're back. Just double check everything's as live as possible. Oh, the clean feed's a little laggy. Looks like we just caught back up, though. Dark in the upper right and Hostum in the bottom left. As we get this underway. It's going to be Jaganatha for game number two. Between the two of them. Again, 2-1. Liquid in the lead in the series. Austin picks this map. This is a very good PvZ map if you want to play a longer game. This is the exact sort of map you want if you want to play like double stargate void ray. If you want to get into the later stage. It can be a bit easier for the Zerg to obviously attack you early on this map. You see a lot of uh, people who will just bust a player who tries to go you know, double stargate void here. But if Austin wants to end up playing a similar style and believes he can make changes to win a game like that. This is definitely the kind of map to do it on. There's Death Aura as well. I think Jack and Nath is a little better for it overall. Uh, just because you get to a fifth and additional bases on Jack and Nath are much easier to defend in PvZ than they are in Death Aura for sure. As you get this set up, I just want to quickly say uh, thank you very much to I'm Rakit for the 24 month resub on the Prime and Petroa on the 2 month resub on the Prime as well. Thank you so much for the resubs at the end of that last game. Appreciate it, guys. And we've got a lot of people in here. If you're enjoying the stream, hit that follow button. Don't forget to see when we go live again in the future with more StarCraft 2. We've got World Team League every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday lately. And at the moment, just to make sure, if nothing else, you drop by for all of that. As this series is definitely uh, living up to some excitement. A lot of people definitely looked at this as the series to watch out for this week, and so far, absolutely has been the case. Um... Even if this one ends up being a 4-2 or so, it doesn't get an ace match, I think we can... Uh, even if the rest of the games aren't brilliant, I feel like we can already settle down and say we've had a pretty good time here, you know? Awesome forces Dark's initial hatch onto the third location. Other than that, our setup here is relatively... I mean, that's kind of expected as well, but everything else is just kind of as expected, so... No surprises there just yet. It's a Stargate opening from Hostum, kind of expect that one as well. I'd be kind of surprised if Hostum goes and really changes this up into, like, Glaives or anything. I feel like when you play Glaives after a Stargate like this, it just invites Dark to be aggressive into you, and that's exactly what Dark wants. So Dark will just be like, well, okay then, let's do this. And Hossum will be like, nah, no, actually, that's not quite what he really wanted, you know? 
So yeah, I think uh, Hawson was just happy to play. Double Stargates, Void, set it up. That's going to be my prediction for the moment. Void reproducing. The Ling is going to go for a rundown and just going to grab these adepts. One of them. Didn't get picked off already. So one adept down, the other adept chased away. Just going to see Void Ray production continuing through from Hearthstone at the moment here is... Yeah, I mean, nice shutdown from Dark, making sure these adepts don't get to do anything. Of course, this game, Dark's not going to be playing from that deficit of the opening, right? You know, last game, the deficit early was uh, pretty sizable. Hearthstone definitely played from... Uh, from, from a bit of a lead in the early game, but... Yeah. Uh, again, Dog was good enough and was skilled enough to negate that advantage and didn't give Hawson the chances to push through and to win out with that advantage. They're uh, building up in the main base. Just gonna see the Nexus down on the third base here from Hawson as well as... Yeah, everything kind of as we expected to be, right? I don't think there's any surprises yet still. On Jagannatha. Just taking a chance to, to recoup a little bit after that long game. On uh, on Romanda's side. Oh, a Robo Facility. Okay, so we are going to change it up a little bit. Cool. Um, So it isn't going to be our two two Stargates. It's going to be a little bit more ground focus from Hawson with that Robo coming into play. I like that. I like uh, switching it around a little bit. See our Lingers moving back up to the top side of the map. Just going to be seeing our additional drones coming through. Voidray going to continue to produce, and that's going to rally out to the front. The Hydra Den is just going to go down the natural expansion. We do have our Lings continuing to join up together. Observer on the way through. Robovay continuing up. This Ling is going to jump on top of this probe, and... Oh, one pro taking some hits. So yeah, real fast Robo Bay. Still building Void Rays, but again, off that single Stargate, it's uh, it's going to be a little slower getting up there. If we go straight into... What do we go? Do we go Colossus? Do we go Disruptors? Disruptors with Void Rays would be more common, but off one Stargate, can you maybe go with Colossus? Either way, I kind of like... You know, we've got fast Hydras here, but you're going to have an answer to those Hydras pretty early on. Hostum knows about the Hydras too. Dark's actually just going 61 draw and Hydra Lingle in. So I think what Haas wants to do in this scenario is just build a Disruptor. Yeah, d disruptors are so hit and miss, so I'm a bit scared about it. A Colossus would be consistent damage output. You've got a long time until extended thermal lance, so that's obviously a downside to it. Okay, now we see a second Stargate after a Forge, and we are going to see the Disruptor production already starting. So this seems like a, a way in which you get up to a... Uh, this seems like a way to get to that Void Race style, but via like a safer route because you're not going to be as vulnerable to the timings because you are going to have some splash damage on the map. So I'm just going to be seeing that Disrupt account building up against 60 drones. Dark is committing to this attack. Possum's going to have, I mean, an extra battery building right now. And these disruptors have work to do. They need to get rid of some of these hydras. If you don't get rid of hydras here, you're in trouble. But then you also need to be careful about the banes, because they're going to crash through and do a lot if you don't handle those. This is going to be a tense few moments for Possum. Let's see what he can do defensively here. He will have two disruptors to work with. He's got a void rate can that's looking okay. These banes don't have bane speed or anything, as we do have a stasis ward on the left side as well, so maybe you want to focus on the right side defense initially, let the stasis ward do work. He does chase, he hits the banes with the first disruptor, second disruptor doesn't know what he wants to do just yet, he's going to pull it back, he actually wins the fight on the left side initially, Hostum. Bane's hitting the mineral line, but actually not getting any kills just yet, because the super battery keeps it alive, the probes are going to keep on running, and the last few banes come in for five workers killed. This was a defense from Hostum, and a beautiful defense at that holds with ease. The last couple of Banes pop out of the stasis, and I was kind of down in my thought, maybe let those units on the left side come forward and eat the stasis and fight to the right. But by going left, he actually got a bunch of unit kills for free. Our Observer is really excited about everything, by the way. They're like, look at this! There's a fleet, <laughs> there's a fleet beacon! There's an extra Stargate! 
I think Awesome says, right, I've defended, and once again, I feel safe enough to tech up right now, so let's get my Fleet Beacon down, let's build into those carriers, and let's play a longer game from a lead again. So Hawson gets a lead, and he will try and take a fourth base as Dark sits out the front in the center of the map. And we've seen a stays sword position out to the right side, missile upgrade, melee upgrade coming through, Dark only just now looking at upgrades in this game. And maybe Hawson would actually have an aggressive opportunity if he just makes a move out. It's like the problem for Hawson is his army isn't exactly the best at moving across the map, you know? It's not the best at actually kind of going onto the map and fighting, because you rely a lot on the defensive capability of the Disruptors. Mm. So yeah, it would be. it's not the sort of army that you can warp prison reinforcements into either, right? So there's definitely reasons to be a little bit more scared and to not commit across. He's going to come to the center of the map, though, and, and try and hold some forward positions, force those Hydras back. Dog did get up to 84 drones. Of course, Hawson is just on his way to carriers, so... But I'd love to see from Hawson this time, I think, if he hits six carriers and plus two, is he really just go for the attack. Because I think in this game especially, Dark's preparation against, like, six plus two carriers is going to be almost non-existent. There's not even luck as what can pure hide do against disruptors. Well, the Lings can get on top of the disruptors, though, right? And the Voyagers then have to figure out what they want to target. So it's the combination of Ling Hydra. I, I just think Carson's better off waiting for carries and then fighting than kind of going right now. This Disruptor shot's going to force units back. But especially when you've got the creep spread to split with as well as Dark and the setup surrounds with. It's, it's a dangerous position to fight across and into. At least if you go with the carriers, like I say, there's not really much of a response to the carriers here at least. In comparison... A lot of Banes morphing in, 57 Banelings. Dark starts up high, but looks like Dark's going to be the aggressor again as he maxes out. So maybe Austin does just want to end up sitting back here and trying to defend against this big Baneling run by. I mean, this is going to be mass. I say run by. It's obviously a full-on attack. Ling's going to eat the first stasis ward. A lot of Banes on this right-hand side. The Disruptor actually gets quite a few of them, but these probes, they are locked in the back here. This is the problem that we saw last time that never actually came to fruition. The probes have nowhere to run to there, and they were always going to go down. Fight in the center, though. Hawthorne's able to push, push back the Hydras. Ah, 22 probes down. That's rebuildable. You've got four bases. You can rebuild 23 workers. Hawthorne's starting to move across the map. I think he really believes in his carriers right now, and that dog doesn't necessarily have an answer to those. All of those beans just got used up. Here we go. Dog is going to start fighting in. The carriers are going to start being part of this fight. Disruptors are going to get taken down, though, so not a single disruptor shot fires here. Hawthorne gets hit from multiple sides on creep, and... Well, it's kind of down to the carriers here. The carriers don't know what to do. They're like, do we go for the Hydras? Do we go for the Ling Bane? Because the Ling Bane is running by towards our base. Maybe you just let the Ling Bane run by and you continue through because the Hydra count isn't good enough. The anti-air isn't good enough. Those carriers have no answer. You are going to take damage over here, but I feel like that's manageable. But how much are you going to get done on this side? The Voids need to kind of wait. Wait for the Interceptors. Fight with them. Fight as a unit. Here we go. Austin pushing forward to try and take a map off Dark and put Liquid onto Match Point. As we come on through, this hatchery's going to be in some trouble. These other lings in a little bit of trouble as well. Interceptors flying forward once again. Hydra's still falling here. Hydra's going down on big accounts. Dark supply is dropping down. Hostum's numbers are looking good. And Dark has no option but to type GG. And Hostum gets a map off of Dark. You can see he's excited about that. And he comes back from the 50-minute loss, which you could say was in his hands as well. And Hostum is going to put Team Liquid on match point. Team Liquid are guaranteed a point out of this series against tournament favorites Dragon Phoenix Gaming.